talk about it before we're here with the one and only Dr. Wade Nobles. How you doing today, brother? I'm doing well. Glad to be on your program. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, as, as I was saying uh, before we started, you know, uh, it's been 10 years since I've uh, interviewed you and I saw you at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History in Detroit, February 25th, 2017, when you spoke with Dr. Uh, Linda Jeffries and Professor Jane Small, two of my teachers. So it's good to have you back on, man. And uh, that was the day my daughter was born also. So that was a crazy day. <laughs> that was a awesome day. <laughs> Absolutely. This COVID is causing the National Association of Black Psychologists. We're going to have our national convention. Mm -hmm. You're going to have your national convention. What? Are you breaking up? Can you still hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Hold on just a second here. You're breaking up. People on Facebook, let me know if you. Okay. There you go. I, I hear you again. Okay. National, national Black. Uh, uh, Association, uh, National Association Black, of Black Psychologists. Uh -huh. We were having our convention in Detroit this year, and we were doing some programming at the museum, but COVID put all that on the back burner. Absolutely, brother. Well, I, I man, it's disrupted basically everything, and I had a full schedule from March through November speaking out of state, and that's all up in the air, brother. That's all gone. Mm -hmm. But, but um, the reason why. Um, I wanted to uh, have you on is because uh, the documentary Hapi, the role of economics on the development of civilization, uh, the world premiere is uh, on Thursday, July 18th. And I've interviewed Professor Jane Small, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, and also Dr. Julian Malvo, who are featured in the film. And you're also featured in this film as well. So um, it's a fantastic film. And first I, I want to um, uh, just give a brief introduction uh, to our, our followers who may not be familiar with you. Now, I first found out about you on the TV show For the People in the early 1990s, hosted by Lister Belt Middleton, which came out of South Carolina. Okay, that's why that's why I first saw you, and uh, he interviewed you. Okay, you're breaking up, and now you're not. Now you're not. I was letting people know I first found out about you in the early 1990s on the TV show For the People, hosted by Lister Belt Middleton. Yes. And he interviewed you and I heard you talk about power's ability to define and shape reality, and have other people accept your definition of reality as if it were their own. So, yes. uh, but for over four decades, Dr. Wade Nobles has studied classical African philosophy, Kemet, Twa, and Nubian, and traditional African wisdom traditions coming from the Akan, Yoruba, Bantu, Wolof, Dogon, etc., as the grounding for the development of it now of an authentic black psychology, an authentic black psychology. Dr. Wade Nobles is a founding member of the Association of Black Psychologists and former national president from 1994 to 1995. He is professor emeritus of uh, Africana studies and black psychology at San Francisco State University and the author of over 100 articles, uh, chapters, research reports, and books. He's the co-author of the seminal article in Black Psychology, Voodoo or IQ, an introduction to African psychology. And Dr. Wade Nobles is the co-founder and past executive director of the Institute for the Advanced Study of Black Family Life and Culture, Inc., a freestanding independent community-based nonprofit black think tank and scientific educational training and research corporation based in Oakland, California. So we want to welcome back to the African History Network show, Baba Dr. Wade Nobles. All right, brother. Glad so, to be back. Oh, absolutely. So um, first of all, let people know, how did you get involved in this film, Hapi, the role of economics on the development of civilization from uh, director Ta uh, Taiki Grant? Well, uh, uh, Taiki reached out to me, and I, I think that uh, uh, Dr. J, Dr. Jeffries, and mm -hmm. Professor Small and I have been working together for I don't know how long. And so I guess yeah. once once uh, they were involved, I got involved. It's like we racing cars and you take the wind tail. Yes. Draft. But yep. I was I was the draft wind that came along with them. Absolutely. Well, you know, Taki talked to talked to me about this project a year and a half ago, something like that. So uh it's good to uh see the the real fruits of the labor. All right. It's a major piece of work. It's a, it's a major yes. piece of work, not just because we all, all those people are in it, but because of the conversation that we're having about uh, how we place ourselves and locate ourselves 
in the world historically as well as contemporary times. Okay. So um, one of the things I noticed, even going back to um, early 1990s, your interview uh, that Lister Bell Middleton, the host of For the People, did with you, you make a distinction between uh, African American or African or Black psychology and white psychology. Okay, you make a distinction between the two and you talked about the influence of culture. Okay, yeah. how culture influences uh, the way people think, feel, act and behave. Can you talk, can you talk about that um, briefly? Yes, let me start with culture because I think that that's, that's the life stuff. Yes. Uh, people get confused and think culture is about song and dance and holidays and ceremonies and eating barbecue and fried fish and all that stuff. We do all that stuff, mm -hmm. but that's not the essential of culture. culture and I like to use the example of in, in, in our chemistry classes, we would, we would learn how to do experiments with Petri dishes. Right. And the stuff in the Petri dish is called culture. And, mm -hmm. and the life forms you put in the culture grow de determine the nature of the gook or the culture in the Petri dish. Well, for humans, culture is the, is the stuff that produces life, that, that, that shapes life. And so it, uh, on everything in terms of in terms of uh, 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 in terms of uh, customs, traditions, uh, right. practices, all that comes out of culture. Culture is technically the process which gives you a general design for living and patterns for interpreting reality. Well, if culture does that, then we have to look at these things called scientific, social scientific disciplines. Well, white psychology, really is the psychology that emerged out of the philosophy and culture of the West. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with Black people. And in fact, the culture of the West is driven by this ideology of white supremacy. Yes. You can't separate it. So then if you have, a, you have a, a science of human functioning that is grounded in white supremacy, how can we use that as the psychological medium to explain and understand our behavior? That's really what the break was about. The break to, to, to form a black psychology was about recognizing what is the philosophical and cultural grounding in which black life should stand. Right. And it clearly was in Europe. It clearly wasn't uh, uh, America, white America. So we had to begin to do the work of formulating and creating. And I say it's a science of human functioning because the Western white psychology is so contaminated confusion it is, in my mind, it is useless for us, even though, even though we are making the best of it in many of our practices as therapists and clinicians. Well, you know, um, it's interesting that you say that because I, I had a conversation years ago with someone who I went to middle school with and they became a psychologist. And I was talking about some of your information and black psychology and and understanding the role culture plays. And they told me, you know, there is no black psychology. They were, they, 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 they were using the, the white standard of psychology as the standard for everybody. And I, I remember you years ago talking about uh, normality and how normality is defined as the majority of a people exhibiting a particular behavior. OK, so how could white people become the standard of normality when they are a minority on the, in, in the world, population wise, only about 10 percent of the population? And it's simple. They, they mm -hmm. come that they, they can become that by my definition of power, power yeah. is the ability to define reality and to have mm -hmm. other people respond to your definition as if it were their own. Exactly. White folks simply stood up and said, we are the standard of humanity. Yes, they define themselves as the standard of humanity, and they right. became the universal. And right. once we all accepted, including your childhood friend, once we all accepted that, they had power over us. Exactly, because but they, but, but but they they did that after they came out of the dark ages, got the information that the African Moors took into Europe. They start conquering people's lands, extracting the wealth out of people's lands and things like this and rebuild Europe. And then as you have a rise in these European powers, you have a rise in the European phenotype as becoming the standard. And they start to reinterpret these mythological or 
religious figures. So Michelangelo yeah. paints the Sistine Chapel and uses his relatives as the yeah. model for Adam and Eve and paints uh, uh, God as being white, things like yeah. this, right? I agree with exactly what you say, but I would, I would edit it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a reinterpretation, it was a lie. It was a lie. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I just <laughs> right. So they just lied about their their location in the world of the human family. Right. They lied about it. So we have to be honest and clear with complete transparency. Right. If it's water, if it's wet, call it water. Right. When they lie. They lie. They don't reinterpret it because reinterpret take reinterpret says there's a possibility of error. Yeah. Lie says there's the possibility of wrongdoing. Mm hmm. And they were wrongdoing. Right, absolutely. They were universality. Absolutely. All right, now um, explain to people, you know, with all this going on right now with COVID-19, this COVID-19 uh, crisis, the impact it's having on the economy, trauma inflicted upon it were everybody, especially African-Americans. Explain to people what actually is mental health. <clears throat> there is no mental health. Okay. Mental health is a concept that comes out of the European mindscape. Okay. Because they took their model, which, which really comes out of Descartes' confusion. Descartes mm -hmm. divided the mind in, in you know, science and religion, wanted to have that. So he talked about the split between the mind and the body. Physical medicine grew up, and, and, and Western psychology tried to become legitimate by claiming it has the same, the same authority as physical medicine. Mm -hmm. And so rather than have physical health, we also have mental health. That's not true in terms of, that's true in terms of their indigenous thought. It is not true in terms of African world thought. Right. African says, you don't, and my reading of it, so I want to be clear that so folk can throw this away if they want to, but my reading of our wisdom traditions suggests that it is not mental health being the mind version of the physical body, but what is, what is our Wellness is simply that. It is wellness. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is wellness that is the concept. So when are human beings well? And, and that wellness has to do with both our mindscape as well as our physical being. Right. In fact, it also has to do with our existence in the afterlife. And mm -hmm. that don't even come in the conversation in the Western world, that we have to look at our, our dwellers of heaven, our ancestors. How are they well? And in being well in the afterlife, how does that inform our being well in this life? So, so our stuff is far more elegant and far more complex. I reject the idea of mental health. I accept the idea of being well. And my wellness has to do with the alignment of my essence, my experience, and my expression. Okay. How I look in the world, that's the experience, uh, that's the expression. How I feel in the world, that's the experience. And how is my essence, that's my spirit, uh, activated? And there are all kinds of things. So those three E's for me work nice as a little cute mnemonic that I have to have a divine alignment in order to be well. Mm -hmm. I have to have my essence, which is my spirit, my experiences, which is where I live. And that's the problem for us as African people throughout the world is because Europe and America has so contaminated and toxified the world that our experiences are always out of alignment. Right. And then our, and then our expression has to do with how the world sees our face. Think about this just for a moment. Everything about our physicality as black mm -hmm. has been denigrated. Mm -hmm. Our lips are too big, our nose are too fat, our hair is too kinky, everything. And so our face in the world, which is our expression, has been so denigrated that we run away from ourselves. Right. Right. Exactly. We do everything to change our face. Mm -hmm. That's our expression. Even, even the stuff they put on as adornment, how we dress, the clothes we wear, how we suit up, what we think we're doing fine. All that stuff is expressions. So you break it and up we go to now. France for the best look. We never go to Africa and tell her to talk about what's the best look. That's mm -hmm. the damage. That's the damage. That's the damage that has happened in American ideas of what it is to be human. Hold on just a second, Doc. You are, I, can, I can hear you, but your screen is freezing up. Okay, there we go. 
All right, it's caught up. Okay, yeah, a- a- absolutely. Um, you, w- once again, uh, Fran- uh, France or European nations become the standard for fashion. For okay, everything that is the good. Yeah, and that's that's how it prepares. Everything that is the good mm-hmm. is sent to Europe and America to define, and we run behind doing it. We run dry- even even the the aberrancy of some of our gangster rap that happens with our young people. They take on mafioso names. Right, <laughs> like Gotti. <laughs> yeah, 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 you see? Capone. Yeah, yeah, you, don't, you don't realize that we, we are so, we have been so uh, damaged, and I say spirit damaged, that we don't even realize that we think we're being cool, we are simply being a mule. Mule. <laughs> a mule. Uh, yeah, when you, when, you, when you breed a horse and a donkey, Mm-hmm. You get a mule, and right. the mule is incapable of reproducing itself. You mm. follow me? And right. so when we, when we borrow their stuff, we muleify ourselves, and we walk around, but we can't produce an authentic African idea. We can reproduce their shit, right. language. We, right. can, we, we, can, we, can, we can reproduce, not only we reproduce itself, we produce it better than them. That's the amazing Exactly. exactly. That's and, but that's a mule. Right. We are, we're mulefying ourselves when we adopt this stuff uncritically. Mm, I, I totally agree with that, brother. And 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 we would defend we would defend the nonsense. That's the thing. We would de- we would defend the nonsense to 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 the end of time. All right. Um so what do you think and this ties into the film high P as well. What do you think we can do to reverse all of this? To reverse the brain damage uh the indoctrination by european white supremacy and european culture uh what do you think we can do to fight against that and reverse that and how do you think the film hoppy plays a role in that the hoppy is the hoppy is a uh is like, like, the, like the cowbell the old folks who back in the day when they hit the cowbell said time to come eat right yeah. right well hoppy's the cowbell yeah. It's ringing to us. It's time to come and eat. The call to action. Come to, come to action, right? And and the thing that is is important for me about Hoppy, everything in there needs to be <coughs> not watched as entertainment, but watched as instruction. Right. And and it's going to be hard because we have been we have been conditioned to watch films and movies as entertainment. That's that's how that's how mulified mind. Sit and mm-hmm. watch the entertainment. And if you don't catch me with some action, I turn it off. Because that's what we've been conditioned. But Hoppy has to be not watch the entertainment, but as instruction. And in its instruction, it says something very profound. And I think it was Dr. Jay that points it out about his pyramid of mm-hmm. power, economics, and culture. The pyramid uh, principle. The yep. Pyramid principle. That's so important because for me, the most important uh, trajectory on that pyramid is the culture. Because mm-hmm. the culture determines how you deal with economics, it determines how you deal with politics. But we don't pull that out, you know, rescue that and fluff that out and then interrogate it. We will miss the point, and it becomes like a, a like a mnemonic. An easy, it's a little, little easy saying. The pyramid power. We run around saying stuff and don't know what it means. So happy has to be studied. And in that part that I think is important, forget for me, it's the cultural piece, because it is through culture that we heal a whole race. Yes. It is through economics that we can give some people an advantage and some people don't, because we follow the European model of avaricious capitalism. So some people have a whole lot of money, economic, some people ain't. Mm -hmm. And in terms of politics, same thing. You can have some people who benefit from the power of politics and some people who are exploited by the power of politics. So for me, the critical piece is culture, if we're going to heal the whole race. And I've been thinking about this for a while now, Okay. Probably since the last time I talked to Alessa Middlefield. But I think there are three or four big ideas that we should embrace as we try to heal our people. The first big idea, and they're not in any, any order, so don't, don't do that with them. But okay. The first big idea is to rescue our traditional healing rituals. Rescue our traditional healing rituals. Because in those rituals, we define the value of life. And the healing rituals that I want us to first interrogate are those rituals, healing rituals that they have demonized, voodoo. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we've been taught to run away from voodoo. 
as mm-hmm. young men, we talk about if you meet a little girl and she's from Louisiana, we put caution on. <laughs> don't, don't eat her rice. Don't eat her rice because she put she put something on you. Right. So we start to be afraid put of a food. root on you. <laughs> put a root on you. So we should. So I'm saying we should rescue our traditional healing practice, voodoo, ifa, condom blaze, santeria, all those that have been mm-hmm. bastardized as traditional pagan religions should be uplifted as tra- as traditional science of the spirit. Now let's interrogate them. That's one thing we need to do if we're going to heal our heal our whole race. The second thing I think we can do is to rest to, is to restore wellness in our families and com- community as a lifestyle. Wellness in our families and communities as a lifestyle. You notice I didn't say individuals because right. the lowest common denominator is family, not individual. If the family is not well, individuals don't matter. If the family is not well, communities dysfunction. So we have to rescue or be restore wellness. Remember I said earlier, wellness is the alignment of essence, experience, and expression. So we need to restore wellness in our families and community. The third thing I, I want us to interrogate as we deal with happy and other thoughts, other images, is to reignite, to, to reignite light and love in our reality. Light in love. Light is the illumination. It is called Saku. That's in my work. I use Saku as right. a term, but Saku really means the illumination. So how do we deal with always illuminating, peeling back the okie doke, looking at the deep meaning? That's illumination. In love, the term for love is Zola in 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 uh, in, uh, in in Congo in Kikongo. Zola, Z O L A. Zola is love, and love ignites the internal self-healing potential. Love. It's not romantic stuff. It's not the romance stuff we see on, on Days of Our Lives and all those stories and stuff. Right. Love is a powerful force that ignites our self-healing potential. So I'm saying in order to heal a whole race, we're going to walk around talking about how do you love black folk? The, mm-hmm. first, the first requirement is do you love black people? Right. Because if you love black people, you are instantaneously igniting their self-healing potential. All right. And the final one is to reclaim people, mm-hmm. authority of eldership. The, the ones who walk in the world as elders have wisdom and intelligence, but they also have the authority to protect us from ignorance. That's the primary responsibility of elder, to, re, to re protect his people, his or her people from ignorance. So we take those four things and we start systematically talking about how do we do that as we engage in being an an entrepreneur? How do we do those as we engage in being a a, a medical doctor? How do we do those engaged in being a teacher, a plumber, a bus driver? Whatever is our, quote, occupations, we should be driven by those four principles if we're going to heal the whole race. Exactly. Exactly. So we have rescue traditional healing rituals. Um, and, and if I up, may, if I may add it myself, it's really rescuing the traditional healing science. Healing science, yeah. Because we, we think about it as just some little practice that we do, like we have some right. ritual, we burn a candle, bring, ring a bell, and we cool. No, right. it's science. Right, so science of the spirit. Healing science of the spirit, yes. Yeah, science of the spirit. And, okay. And we have some models that we have to interrogate. We have to take them back interrogate them voodoo take it back from them don't have no bones in my nose take it back from them right uh ifa take those back from the western uh, captivity and, and look at them and examine them for 2020 time not no 15 15 you know 1500s time and and when we look at things like santeria santeria condomble those were uh spiritual systems that infused Ifa coming from the Yoruba du- during the transatlantic slave trade, uh, they infuse Ifa with Catholicism. Yes. Catholicism is being forced on us. African people infuse what they already have into yes. what's being forced upon us. Yes. Okay. And, and and then something something from the Santeria yes. and Condomble. But when we look at Ifa uh, coming from the Yoruba, um, it, it, we really need to we really need to study that because that's one of the more more popular spiritual systems coming out of you know well, we gotta, Africa. We gotta, we gotta clean it up because we've yeah. got, we've, we've had dirt put on us. Yes, and that's so, true. The root, the root really is voodoo. Yeah. 
Right. You can kind of blaze Santeria and other things come uh, branches. Right, right. Those exactly. Branches get dirt on them. And yes. I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to offend anybody who's a practitioner. Right. But I understand that when you have to, when we had to combine Catholicism, mm -hmm. which was already a, 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 a mutation of original cometic uh, mm -hmm. spiritual system. See, we have, to, we have to recognize that and then we have to do the work. Right. Do the work. Right. It's like the old fashioned, old fashioned scrub board. We're going to get the old bucket, put the scrub board in and scrub, 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 get to get our stuff clean and then right. we can use it. We're still right. using it now. It's still powerful. That's why they're so afraid of it. That's why they mm -hmm. spent all that time demonizing uh, voodoo. Mm -hmm. um, you, if someone did the calculation of the money they spent in writing books and making movies that demonize just one thing, voodoo, you'd be amazed. Well, so that's where the power is. Well, you know, <laughs> so voodoo or voodoo, yes. uh, and we're dealing with the uh, uh, coming from originally coming from the foe of what's called the home uh, of the homey. Yes. Uh, these this was uh, that you, you're dealing with a powerful African spiritual system, but this is something that's used by the Haitians to defeat the French and during the and Haitian Revolution. You, and when you read my book, you see detailed documentation of that. Yep. That's exactly right. That's ex you're exactly right. Right. Hold on just a second. Right here. Here's his book. Yeah, yeah, while, while we were in, in, for the Haitian Revolution, we were fighting the physical battle, but it was it was spirit spirit warfare that caused us to win. Spiritual warfare. We ain't had no big battleships. We ain't had a whole lot of cannons until we stole some. But right. we ain't had a whole lot of cannons. We ain't even had a whole lot of boots. Right. We stole some. But what we had was voodoo. Exactly. And Dr. Wade Nobles is uh, featured in uh, the documentary 1804 Hidden History of Haiti by director Tariq Nasheed. So is uh, three of my teachers, Dr. Linda Jeffries, Professor James Small, and Professor Kabahaya Wafa Kamene. But here is uh, one of Dr. Wade Nobles' books, The Island of Memes, Haiti's Unfinished Revolution. Okay. So check this out. This is exactly what this brother is talking about. All right. And uh, he autographed it for me also. He autographed it for me as well. Okay, I got I got this from him at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, February 25th, uh, 2017, when uh, he spoke there with Dr. Leonard Jeffries and Professor James Small. That was the day my daughter was born also. So I remember that day, okay? Yeah, that's the fourth part of that day. Huh? Yeah, that was, that was the fourth part of the day, your daughter being born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the highlight of the day. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so for those just tuning in, I'm speaking with one of our great grandmaster scholar warriors, Dr. Wade Nobles. He is featured in the upcoming documentary, the new documentary, Hapi, the role of economics on the development of civilization from director Taki Grant. Uh, visit the website hapifilm.com. Uh, let me see. Let's see, we got it right here. Hapifilm.com, H-A-P-I, Hapifilm.com. The world premiere is uh, going to be uh, Thursday, July 18th, um, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time online. You will be able to digi digitally download the film at the end of the premiere. There will be other times uh, that they will show it as well. So you can go to Hapifilm.com uh, to get your tickets. Okay, um, so... You know, I, I, one of the things I talk about is how um, a people's history and culture teaches them how to deal with the problems of the past in the present and the future to meet the needs of the community. And all this ties into this uh, history and our psychology. Um, with all this going on with coronavirus, uh, would you classify the impact of the coronavirus on the African-American community as psychological or mental warfare? Well, we can, we can react to the coronavirus as mm -hmm. psychological because mm -hmm. everything everything is I say everything is spirit driven mm -hmm. and and what the West calls psychology is really spirit mm -hmm. and so so the coronavirus is a physical uh, disease or dis at ease okay and and we, we we respond to it because we've been trained by the West to respond to respond to any kind of disease like like polio pandemic, et cetera. But the critical part about, for me, the critical part about this moment is that the coronavirus has, has allowed us to outdoor the twin virus, which is white supremacy. White supremacy is an airborne disease. <laughs> it's airborne right. and, it, and it affects us. And so we have, we're living in a dual pandemic, dual global pandemic, COVID-19, 
and mm -hmm. in white supremacy 2020. Right. We're seeing white supremacy now in the 2020 version. It's always been with us. It's always affected us. So the, so how how COVID seen itself as a mental, a psychological problem is that it is it is outdooring, literally outdooring white supremacy. We are still talking about it in the wrong language, like it's, it's racism. It ain't racism. Racism is a symptom. White supremacy is the disease. Right. Exactly. And so, exactly. And, and, and it is, a, and, and so, so COVID has allowed us because of this sheltering place is to stop for a minute and think. Mm -hmm. That's the good part of it. We had to stop, sit down. We locked down now, so we had to stop, stop and think for a moment. What's really going on? And what's going on is that this this COVID. 19 virus is recalibrating the world. Mm -hmm. It ain't no place that's safe. <laughs> right. <laughs> it ain't no place that your status, your gender, your nothing is safe. So COVID-19 is recalibrating the world. And in some divine way, it could be that this is the way COVID is the way for the earth to cleanse itself. <laughs> the water seems to be cleaner. Right. Grass seems to be greener. Right. The birds are singing more. So it might right. be that COVID-19 is recalibrating the planet Earth to be better. Mm -hmm. And white supremacy 2020 is our opportunity to recalibrate what it means to be human and have human relationships, to kill white supremacy, to get rid of white supremacy. So the two tasks here, what do we do? Post COVID nineteen is the question, right? What, now, do do? what we do now with it? What we do right. post COVID nineteen? And post COVID nineteen, I think the world gonna take it itself with floods, with earthquakes, with all kinds of stuff to get itself recalibrated. We human beings, which I think are spirit beings, have to recalibrate. How do we live in the world as human beings post COVID nineteen? With dealing with this question of the the global pandemic of white supremacy as an airborne disease. <laughs> the global pandemic of white supremacy as an airborne disease, right? We and breathe, we breathe it. We, we go to grocery. Think about it. when you go to the shopping mall before mm -hmm. you go to out to dinner and somebody puts you in the in, in the restaurant in the corner in the back because you're black mm -hmm. and you don't get your you don't get your 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 biscuits or your bread, but other folks are getting their dessert. Mm -hmm. You are breathing white supremacy right. in the restaurant. So, so for me, uh, white supremacy is a global pandemic, airborne pandemic that all of us around the whole world breathe it and don't realize that we're, we're, we're being made ill by right. white supremacy. Right. You know, when you when you talked about the difference between white supremacy and racism. That's something that I, I talk about. I describe racism as a system of advantage and privilege distributed based upon race, which comes out of the ideology of European white supremacy. Yes. And, and, and racism is a system that upholds the ideology of white supremacy. White yes. supremacy is that ideology and coming coming out of the dark ages and, and as Europeans circumnavigate the globe. Well, first of all, they were dealing with the African Moors for hundreds of years. They saw what happens when Africans intermix with Europeans, because that's taking place throughout Europe to various degrees. But as they circumnavigate the globe, they intermix with these other people and they see the offspring is no longer European. So you have a system put in place to preserve genetic white survival. That's, yes. that, and, that's. And, and let's, let's break it down very, very in detail. Yes. They intermix with other people by force. Mm-hmm. And so life produced by force resonates already with a mutation, mm -hmm. resonates already with a problematic. And so we have to understand that, that this whole European circumnavigating the world was contaminating and putting toxins right. in other people's realities throughout the world. Mm. Absolutely. I got on a love boat, went to some set place, I got on the beach, went on the beach, I saw this lady and we fell in love and we had children. And all was good. No, they 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 impregnated the world by the gun and by the sword and the dick. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let people know how they can um, get your lectures, books, 
uh, et cetera. How can people uh, support you and get your get your information? Yeah, I have a, you, you have to ask the young people. I have a web page somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, oh, I have it. I have it right here. Right. It is drwadenobles.com. Drwadenobles.com. Right some of free, some you're going to put a nickel on, but all, me, me is there. Okay, we got that. And what, what we're going to do, I we're going to. I should say also, you can get me and, and, and people like me mm -hmm. through the National Association of Black Psychologists, our webpage, abside.org. Give, uh, give, give us that webpage again www.abpsi.org. Okay. That's, that's the webpage of the National Association of Black Psychologists. And there's a whole bunch of folk that are, we are struggling with trying to make sense out of the world through the lens of psychology. There's also a, a, a real important group, and I serve as their, their uh, uh, elder advisor, which is uh, uh, Black Therapy Central.org. And that's where folk can go and get connected up with Black therapists, healers who are African centered. That's an important place because all black folk, like your childhood friend, and I would not, even though I love him because he's family, I would not send nobody to him for, for help. Because right. until we cleanse ourselves of the Western contaminant, we don't do really a lot of service for our community. We can we can do so much because we all, you know, black folk always, we take whatever they got and we twist it and turn it to make it work for us. Mm -hmm. That's a limited utility. I want full healing, not partial healing. And, and from, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. For me, the full healing comes through the interrogation and the conversation with authentic Black psychology, which, we, which I'm saying is this notion of rescuing our Africanness, mm -hmm. and, and then and then then constructing that as a healing bomb. And both ABCI and Black Therapist Central are places where people can go and get some help with. Okay, Black Therapist Central is that dot org or dot com? Black Therapist Central dot com. Black Therapist Central dot com. And you know, it, and, and the reason why this is so important is because um, all so many African Americans are suffering from various types of trauma, whether it's physical, sexual, whether it's uh, handed down, it's generational. Uh, we look at things like epigenetics. Uh, the field of study dealing with epigenetics and, and how uh, trauma can be passed down to future generations and alter your DNA, et cetera. Um, and when we talk about, I, I know um, I was at the Congressional Black Caucus weekend. I think that was 20, either 2015 or 2016. I know Dr. J was there. I know you were there. And there was a panel discussion uh, on like reparations. Uh, when we talk about you know, reparations, a lot of people talk about cut the check and things like that. And, you know, my, my thing is I'm all for reparations. I'm, one, I'm for making legal arguments for reparations. One, not wasting people's time. Two, uh, the majority to me, and for my analysis, my study, the majority of reparations should not be in the form of money because we all got a half a million dollars a day or 750,000 white people to have it all back this time next week because we're so psychologically damaged. But I think part of the whole thing dealing with repairing the damage deals with the therapy that you were just talking about. Yes. Uh, it, 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 talk about that for a minute, if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Well, two things, I'm gonna say two things that may sound contradictory. If somehow we got a miracle and everybody got a $2 million check. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of us would put two million dollars go back to white folks but right. some would not go back to white folks right <laughs> right right so i'm gonna experiment with that right 97 percent of our dollars are spent with people that don't look like us that yeah. pattern will continue right so, yeah. <laughs> might, three percent might be the egg that we need to blossom right so, right I'm, I'm, I, I, that, that's one thing but the other thing is that we talk about reparations you have to deal with the root word repair yeah, repair right what needs to be repaired mm -hmm. it is not lost wages Mm, right. <laughs> Not lost Indeed. wages. What needs to be repaired is the be our beingness. Right. That takes us to where we sit as as as, 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 as or black psychologists. We are the we are the ones that are struggling with for the these ABCI for the last fifty one years, struggling mm -hmm. with trying to understand what it means to be black uh, African with a black face, and mm -hmm. then if we understand what it means to be. That's what has to be repaired. Mm -hmm. We can right. no longer keep producing mules. Right. We have <laughs> millions. 
and stallions can only produce a stallion by mating with a stallion. Right. And so, right. So, so, so I think that for me, the reparation is 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 the critical question right now. Right. It's always been repairing always, the damage. When the, lion, when the lion said you're going to get forty acres of mule, that's when it that's when the deal got on the table. But we never get that. That was that was betrayed. But now that we're now at this breaking point right now, mm-hmm. we can raise up that question again reparations but it's what needs to be repaired and again for me it's not lost wages it is not lost time it is not even uh, uh the brutality we experienced the brutality was an instrument that damaged us mm-hmm. the, the 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 white thought was the instrument that damaged us so how do we repair ourselves away from white thought away from white behavior away from white values that's the reparation process Right. And, and and then, you know, as one of my teachers, Professor Kaba Kamane says, to understand the existence of something, you first must understand the pre-existence of existence. So we have to look at who African people were before we were damaged. That's exactly right. That's to right. understand what you're repairing. That quest for breaking from white psychology. We had to go build back before white psychology. Mm-hmm. We can't start with white psychology. Oh, that's that stuff is wrong. No, what we <laughs> what do we do before white psychology? What we right. do, what we what do we do? In that inner sanctum in ancient Kemet, where we engaged in Saku, the illumination in Jer, Saku Jer. Saku is the illumination. The word DJR means the all. Saku Jer is for me the science that we should be engaged in as black psychology. I like to say that, like, like Prince said, I am I'm formally known as a black psychologist. I am now a Saku Jerist. In the right. Saku Jerist, is one who engages in the illumination, Saku, Jer of the all. Mm-hmm. We should be illuminating the all and then walk in the world as affirmative psychological I mean, Saku beings. Right. And, and and the other point, just just so people are not confused, because there's so much confusion out there. And I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way. But when you talk about a stallion, just so people understand, a stallion is a male adult horse that is not being castrated. And so when you got a woman calling herself a stallion, you know, I'm just, I, I know they do that down South, but I'm just saying, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. all right. All right. Here, I, go I ahead. Huh? I had an opportunity to go to my, my daughter was, uh, a, 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 a teaching as a, as, as a principal in, a in, a Kuwait, mm-hmm. Kuwait. Kuwait in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not even the Middle East. That's, that's right. The, no middle, but, right. But, you know what I'm talking. And so she invited. She brought me, my her father, her brother, quick. And on that going around, we went to the royal. Uh, uh, what do you call? Them? Uh, what do you call? What they have? have re- the royal stables. Okay. Royal, royal stables. Stable. Mm-hmm. And these these Arabs understood that the. The, the 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 elegance and the excellence of a certain breed of animal had to be taken care of with elegance and excellence. Mm-hmm. They didn't just throw them out the pass and let them roam. They they had these 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 Arabian stallions were living better than most black folk in the United States. <laughs> you know what I'm, so, I'm, I'm checking this out. Wait, these horses, these horses, this is a horse, this is an animal. This is mm-hmm. a beast. They right. were living better than most of folk in my family in the United States. And but the, the, the message here was that when you have something that is precious in that you cherish it, you surround its environment with the instinct to be cherished. Mm-hmm. How do we create black communities right now? Create black communities where the instinct is that in this place. You are cherished. Right, right. You're not ducking down from police killings or even from crazy black folk killing. You're mm-hmm. in an environment where you are cherished. So see, there are models we can think about. And exactly. So, so, so and I'm not talking about let's be horses. I'm talking about understand that there's a being because a horse is a being too. Mm-hmm. There are beings. And in the place of beings, how do you create an environment where that being is cherished? Exactly. That, that's exactly. what that's what post corona should be for us. We should be engaging in study and in, in politics and in in in, in 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 environments that we engage in so that when we post corona, 
we create black communities where being there is to be cherished. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And, and, and and this is why, you know, when Dr. when Dr. Leonard Jefferson, Professor James Small teaching, they talk about the pyramid principle. And I, I use this in my teaching and I show a pyramid of confrey. The foundation is African history and culture that gives us our VIPs, our values, our interests and our principles. It gives us this cultural paradigm that we see reality through that influences our economic empowerment and our political empowerment. And it, it, it and that found to our self uh, self esteem, self development, and self worth. And you only protect what you respect. You only protect what you respect. So when you've been taught to hate yourself and hate people that look like you, you can't build what it is that you're talking about has to come post corona. All right. Um, very quickly here. Do you think this is a uh, the film hot P? Do you do, would you recommend that families sit together with their children and watch uh, the film hot P? I think adults should sit together and watch it. <laughs> right. Because you can't teach what you don't know. Right, right. So, so, so make it, strap in your child, because our children are, are going to sit through that really uh, without some complaint, because we've been, we've been contaminated. Mm -hmm. So the first step is for adults to get together to watch it through, and then talk about how do we translate this for the next sitting with our children. Mm -hmm. How do we, what, what pieces do we want to, to identify for our children to pay special attention to. Remember their children. Right. I don't, right. I don't, I don't believe that uh, you know, there is some gender conversation, intergenerational conversation going on, but I'm not going to abdicate my responsibility to be an elder. Right. When I sit, there's a good, there, there's a good proverb that I love, not only because I've become old and now people think my elder, but the Proverbs, African proverb says that, a, that a, when an elder sits on a stool, they see farther than a child in a tree. Hmm. When the elder sits on the stool, they see farther than farther a child than in a tree. A tree. So, so, so the things that I bring to the conversation, if I'm an elder, that I got to help my child climb down out of the tree and listen to. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what we should do with happy. We should have elders looking at it, adults looking at it together, and then talk about what ways can I draw my attention to my child who's on the internet, who's right. doing Twitter and all that stuff. How, what things of, of Hoppy can I pull out, extract, and share that with my with the youngers as conversation? That's when you have the intergenerational conversation. We can we can do the work first. We can't right. be lazy old folks to call ourselves elders. We have to we have to do the work, and then figure out how do we translate that. How do I how do I watch? How do I engage in this media with young people? But my job is to do the pinpointing. The point of, for example, there's a there's a, 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 a movie called Night John. And Night, Night John. Is about, Night Night John. John. It's about a brother who's free, but puts himself back in slavery to teach young people how to read. Mm. But he has he has done the work. And mm. now he's gonna figure out strategically how do I not get killed while I teach this little girl how to read in the dirt? So drawing out letters in the dirt. That's the model I'm gonna say. Old folks gotta do the work and then right. figure how not to get killed and pass on the wisdom and the insight to the next generation. The wow. next generation, they can teach us how to work this stuff. They right. Can, how to deal with this electronic and stuff. They can teach me how, uh, Daddy, Baba, you talking, but I can have your your, your talk go to 4,000 people right now. Right. Well, I, what I did in the museum in Detroit, we had, what, 400 people in the auditorium? Maybe. Yep, something like oh, that, 350, yep. See? So, so th there's a role for the genius of youth mm -hmm. to be married with the genius of eldership. Right, right. Hoppy is that gateway to do that. We can, you can use Hoppy to open up the gate to have that intergenerational conversation. And I think what's good is for documentaries like this is, and, and I've shown various documentaries to youth and things like this, uh, maybe show segments of it to youth and have them go do research on it, have yeah. a conversation with it, but then have them go do research on it to that's, break down these different that's segments. That's you know, both folk doing the work. Yeah. I do, they have segmentized. They're, you're right. There may be five segments that we can do hoppy with, and mm -hmm. we can pull out one segment that maybe only our young girls be dealing with. Mm -hmm. One segment that only our young boys be dealing with. Young segment that only those who are getting ready to go off to college who right. need to be inoculated need to be dealing with. See, those are, that's, the, that's the work I'm saying. The pre-work has to be done. 
Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, um, uh, and, and those are good assignments also for people who do homeschooling or people who are homeschooling their children involuntarily because of COVID-19. Those are, those are assignments that, you know, you can do uh, assigned to your children. All right. Well, look, uh, once again, uh, Dr. Wade Noble's website is uh, drwadenobles.com. Dr. W-A-D-E-N-O-B-L-E-S, drwadenobles.com. You can read more about him, get in contact with him, order his books, everything. Definitely support this brother. This is one of our Grandmaster Scholar Warriors. And uh, also visit the website, hapifilm.com, H-A-P-I, hapifilm.com. The world premiere of the film is Thursday, July 18th, 2020, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's online and uh, you can purchase tickets there and get more information. And, um, you know, I talked to uh, Ta uh, Taiki Grant, the director about this project about a year and a half ago. And uh, he, want, we would, he wanted me in the film, but we can never connect to film our portion of it. So I'm on the marketing team. Well, look, brother, it's always good to talk to you, uh, Dr. Wade Nobles. And uh, go ahead. Tell your audience, watch Happy. Yes. When you watch it, talk back. Talk <laughs> to the film. Say, that don't make no sense. <laughs> we all thought about that. Talk to the film. Because right. it's a conversation. Like old folks would do when they watch, back then we watched the cowboy movies. We rooting for the Indians, rooting for the cowboys, wherever your confusion took you. But talk <laughs> to the film. Talk to it. Say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop, stop, stop the film. Let me go back. Let me rewind that and think about that some more. Right. interact with the film don't just sit there passively and watch it right and, and that and that's something that you, you when when list developed middleton interviewed you about 30 years ago for for the people you talked about how that black stuff just comes out of us and you yeah. talked about because <laughs> i see so when that when that show used to come on i had a cassette recorder tape recorder and i put up to the tv and and we'll record the shows and i listened to them over uh, like a hundred times man dr leonard jeffries uh dr naeem akbar dr ben all that but um what you just talked about because we watch movies differently than white people that's right <laughs> we do the way we do because our blackness will lead us yeah that's that spirit that's that spirit so we we have africans so we have a knowing and knowable spirit mm -hmm. we don't know what our spirit knows but it mm -hmm. comes out of us. Right. And sometimes right. we're embarrassed by it because but the spirit saying, no, you ain't supposed to take that shit no more. And you're like, <laughs> right. stop them. We say, oh, well, how, where'd that come from? You have right. a knowing and noble spirit. And so right. we can use our spirit as an ent as, as an intelligent entity to guide us. Right. Talk and uh you. um and you you said um um in that interview you talked about how when white people said talked about how we were ugly we came up with the black of the berry the sweet of the juice the, the fight against that that's that black stuff coming out of us that was a counter ideological statement against white supremacy right so everything about, about white is right we we just slapped them back with the black of the berry the sweet of the juice simple it's, precise concise accurate Exactly. Exactly. I told you, I, I studied this stuff. I told you. Okay. Uh, once again, I, I can't remember if I said Saturday night. It's not Saturday. It's Thursday. The, the war premiere is Thursday, July 18th of the film um, of, um, I'm sorry, hold on. It's uh, sorry. It's Saturday, July 18th. The July 18th is correct. I, I got it. I got a career Saturday. You just sent me a note. Yeah. Uh, Saturday, July 18th, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, this is the uh, website, hapifilm.com, hapifilm.com uh, for more information and to get tickets. Okay, brother. All right, Dr. Wade Nobles. Look, it's always good talking to you, brother. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll bring you back. Go ahead. Yeah, whatever this is that you've got, I see a little recording thing on Whatever you've got, I need it for my archives because one day my grandchildren are going to want to see what did the granddaddy do. Absolutely. I'll send this to you. Absolutely. Okay, brother. Hotel. You have a good day. Okay. Peace to the Always family. To talk with you. Absolutely, brother. You bring the right, blackness out of me. What'd you say? You bring the blackness out of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right. You take care, brother. It's always good hotel. talking to you. All hotel. right. Hotel. Hotel. Okay, family. That was um Dr. Wade Nobles. It's one of our Grandmaster Scholar Warriors. Once again, the uh, world premiere of the film, Hapi, is Saturday, July 18th, 2027 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Visit the website, hapifilm.com, hapifilm.com. Also, if you like this type of information, you can donate to the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN Show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN Show through Cash App. 
or through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show that helps us to keep doing the research, stay on the air, broadcast our Sunday night show. Uh, you know, this past Sunday, I just interviewed Dr. Julian Malvo, who is uh, featured in the film uh, Hot P also, okay, economist Dr. Julian Malvo. Uh, so look out for that. Uh, well, it's um, on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. And we'll get that we'll get that interview up on YouTube also. All right. Um, all of my DVD lectures are also available at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And we have about uh, a thousand audio podcasts of broad, the interviews I've done and broadcasts I've done going back to 2010. That's at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com as well. Click on the yellow, click on the uh, uh, listen to podcasts right on the homepage of uh, the website. Uh, follow follow me on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. And then also um, follow me, uh, internal notifications on Facebook, and then follow me on YouTube, Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P, uh, on YouTube as well, internal notifications. So you know when we go live. All right. Okay. And let me, uh, let's look here. Okay. We got Carrie E. Uh, uh, just a few people watching. Yeah, so it's Saturday, July 18th, uh, 2020, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, you'll be able to uh, digitally download the video after um, the movie, after it airs, and they have other information uh, for you also at their website, hapifilm.com, H-A-P-I, hapifilm.com. Okay. And uh, listen to the African History Network show Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we broadcast here on Facebook and YouTube, but also on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF in Detroit. I do radio here in Detroit. And because this is an election season, um, I'll be talking about uh, six principles of political self-defense. We'll talk about that on my show Sunday. I'll go back through and we'll go through uh, Joe Biden's um, agenda for African-Americans. I did a six part series where I went through and broke down all six parts of this 22 page agenda. We're gonna do that again, cause some people missed that. We're also gonna talk about uh, a whole concept I teach on called um, uh, political self-defense, six principles of political self-defense, understanding how laws and policies impact the economic conditions of African-Americans, okay? And I also have uh, um, a, a DVD lecture I've done dealing with six principles of political self-defense. There are there actually two presentations on that DVD. That's available at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. I think I have it in digital download format also. All right, well, look, we're going to get out of here. Hey, remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now this corrects wrong behavior. What you do for yourself what you do to yourself and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So when you control the radius of a man's thoughts, you can control the circumference of his actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Remember right now, let's correct wrong behaviors. Not over till we win Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace. <laughs>